Um, we are proud to show off our campus to uh, our visiting uh, ambassadors and uh, consul generals that come to visit BYU. We're happy today to have the consul general from San Francisco, uh, Mr. Han Dong Man, here with us. Uh, also with him is uh, his deputy consul general sitting in the back here is, is Mr. Yi Sang Yul, and we're happy to have him on, on board as well. Um, by way of introduction, Professor, or Professor, uh, Consul General Han has uh, served in numerous posts already in, in the Foreign Service. He has served in uh, London and um, uh, New York and Washington and has served in Algeria. And so he's now the Consul General in uh, San Francisco. Uh, one reason he is in town, did you see it on the news last night? Uh, did you see the news? He presided over an award ceremony where they gave, the Korean government officially gave medals to uh, uh, veterans of the Korean War. And there were all these elderly men who had fought in the Korean War who were being honored by our Consul General. It was a very touching ceremony. Many of the uh, elderly uh, gentlemen were really honored that they would get a medal uh, because the Korean War was one that uh, didn't get a lot of recognition at the time. Uh, but Korea today is very grateful to those who served in the Korean War, and our Consul General was here to make those awards last night. It was in the news. So at this time, it's a great pleasure to turn the rest of the time over to uh, uh, Consul General uh, Han Dong Man, who will be talking about in inter-Korean relations and the Korea-U.S. relationship. Thank you very much, uh, Professor Peter Sun, for your kind introduction. Uh, thank you, Professor Leonard, uh, for organizing a very uh, meaningful event. Uh, it's my great honor and privilege to be here at the uh, very prestigious universities. And uh, I want to share with you uh, some information about the inter-Korean relations and uh, U.S.-Korea uh, alliance. My presentation consists of uh, five parts. Uh, the first part concerns the uh, facts about Korea as of now. The second uh, part uh, relates to inter-Korea relations, including recent uh, political, economic, and uh, military situation in North Korea. The third part uh, is about the U.S.-Korea alliance. The fourth part uh, would be uh, Korea-U.S. Uh, free trade agreement. Uh, in the last part, uh, maybe it's the you know, maybe it's the more interesting. Uh, I will touch upon. Uh, Hallyu, uh, the other name is the Korean wave. Okay, is the Korea is now surrounded by Japan, Russia, and China. Uh, the Korean territorial size is very similar to that of the Virginia state. Uh, Korea is the 50 million of uh, population. Uh, and, uh, you know, go between Korea and the, uh, Japan, we have some uh, territorial and historical dispute. In particular, uh, Korea is now faced with a diplomatic and uh, security environment of great complexity, uh, triggered by uh, Japan's uh, claims uh, over Dokdo Isolate. Uh, Dokdo Isolate is there. Uh, it's a very small isolate, but Dokdo remains a, an integral part of uh, uh, Korean territory, uh, juridically and historically. <laughs> and uh, you know, also the another uh, sea about its name is East Sea. Uh, you know, you ca I can find uh, in this map uh, made by National Geography, I found uh, the both of name East Sea and the Sea of Japan. You know, this uh, uh, statue is the Comfort Woman statue uh, in Grandel of California State. You know, go, during the World War II, more than 200,000 women from Korea, China, Indonesia, Philippines were forced to serve for Japanese Imperial Army as sex slaves. Uh, so many uh, victims uh, now ask the Japanese government to make an apology uh, for their wrongdoing in the past, but Japan did not. That's why, you know, we uh, asked uh, whenever we have a chance to, to uh, make an apology for their long doing. You know, the, the American philosopher, uh, George Santana, uh, famously said, those who do not remember the past are condemned to repeat it. 
So I believe it's just time for Japan to give up its unrightful territorial uh, claim and to give a formal apology uh, for their past uh, wrongdoing. Now, Northeast Asia uh, suffers from so-called the Asia paradox. That means a mismatch or unbalance between the increasing economic interdependence among the regional actors and the regional actors' failure to cooperate in political and security uh, matters due to historical and uh, territorial dispute. That's why it's very important, uh, like uh, Europe, to build uh, a confidence and trust among Northeast Asian countries by taking very small steps, or I mean easy one, uh, in non-secret methods such as uh, climate change or energy issues. If we accumulate a habit of a dialogue and uh, also a trust, you can move on some hard issues such as uh, disarmament issues. Uh, against the backdrop of South Korea, would like to play a bridging role between China and Japan. And, and we announced uh, a Northeast Asia uh, Peace and Cooperation Initiative uh, by taking some uh, the measures to build the uh, trust. Uh, let me touch upon uh, some uh, facts about the uh, Korean economy. You know, the Korean economy is now uh, is the 50th largest uh, economy of the, in the world in terms of GDP. And Korea is now seventh largest trading partner of the United States. And Korea is uh, eighth largest trading nation of the world. Uh, Korea is now number one semiconductor producer. Korea is now number one serpent uh, maker. Korea is now number one shipbuilder in the world. And uh, Korea is now number five car maker in the world. That means Korea is the uh, world's uh, technology leader in high tech sectors. Uh, led by large companies like Samsung or LG or Hyundai. Uh, this uh, uh, this one is the you know, go, according to Bloomberg, uh, the Korea South Korea ranks number one in terms of uh, index of innovation. So Korea is now placed number three uh, in terms of R and D industry and high tech density. You know go. For example, the Samsung spends more than 25% of its revenue for R&D. Uh, whenever I visit the Silicon Valley, I witness the invisible war among Google, Samsung, and Apple. So it's very important uh, to be a high-tech uh, technology leader. Uh, when I visited uh, Israel in 2011, my counterpart, Israeli uh, Deputy Secretary of uh, Foreign Ministry, showed this map. Uh, made by Harvard Business Review in 2009 um, based upon the index of uh, innovation. Even though uh, Finland, Ireland, or uh, Israel, uh, South Korea are very small in, in terms of uh, territorial size, but they are very strong in terms of uh, uh, innovation index. This, uh, that means uh, Korea is a uh, very innovative country. Uh, also, the World Bank uh, report that uh, Korea is now number five in the world uh, in terms of uh, index of uh, patent, uh, following United States, Japan, China, and Germany. And so it's very important uh, uh, to invest on R&D to be a uh, patent country because, uh, you know, the, the, this the, a kind of many disputes uh, on patent issues uh, recently. Uh, we had a, a very similar case between Samsung and Apple. Uh, Korea is heavily dependent on foreign trade. It's now Korea is ninth nation to join a group of nations to surpass the international trading volume of US one trillion US dollars. Uh, given the scarce natural resources, uh, Korea is now uh, trying to expand our economic territory through uh, the uh, conclusion of a free trade agreement with many uh, trade blocs, such as the uh, United States, uh, European Union, and many ASEAN countries. Now we are negotiating with uh, China to conclude a uh, free uh, trade agreement. Well, but to be honest with you, Korean economy, uh, even though it's, uh, we are uh, 
uh, we have gained uh, many economic uh, uh, strength, but uh, still Korean economy is wedged between high tech of Japan and the low labor cost of China. That's why Korean economy should find a new growth engine for the future. Uh, so uh, it's very important uh, to work with many states uh, to promote uh, uh, so creative economy designed to uh, bolster uh, innovation and creation. That's why it's the current uh, government uh, now is uh, focusing on developing CISTs. Uh, that means the IT, information technology, BT, biotechnology, NT, nanotechnology, ET, environment technology, CT, cultural technology. But the last but not least is the space technology. It's the epics of uh, high-tech or cutting-edge technologies. You know, go, uh, Korea also uh, has successfully hosted uh, uh, numerous high-profile uh, events, uh, such as the G20 Seoul Summit, Nuclear Security Summit. When I was in Washington, D.C., I was preparing for the first G20 Summit, uh, followed by the financial turmoil in 2009, uh, G20 is kind of a, a premier forum for uh, international economic cooperation. Uh, the G20 countries are setting the new rules to, for economic directions to, for, for the world. And um, you know, given the uh, uh, importance of uh, securing uh, nuclear safety and security, Korea hosted a, a nuclear summit. Uh, you know, go, you know the, the Fukushima nuclear accident, so uh, securing uh, safety and uh, security of nuclear power plants is of uh, uh, paramount importance. Uh, GCF is not familiar to you, uh, but GCF is kind of a green World Bank. Uh, since it's newly born international organizations are designed to uh, provide assistance to developing countries in adaptation of and uh, the mitigation of climate change. You know, UN State of the Future reported or uh, listed uh, 15 global challenges uh, to be addressed by the international community collectively, uh, such as climate change, sustainable development, energy security, food shortage, uh, the women empowering, et cetera, et cetera. But among others, uh, climate change is the most imminent uh, global challenges to be addressed by the international community. Against the backdrop, the UN Secretary General Ban Ki-moon will host a summit on climate change uh, at the end of this month in New York. Uh, the Korean president will be there uh, to uh, deliver a keynote speech. You know, Korea would like to uh, play a bridging role between developed and developing countries. Now, uh, you know, in the last, over the last six decades, Korea has gained uh, uh, economic uh, uh, progress, but uh, during the time, Korea has uh, developed, uh, focused on um, nurturing some heavy industries, such as uh, uh, steel or shipbuildings or automobiles. Uh, accordingly, those industries uh, produce many CO2 emissions. So now Korea is the world's the seventh largest CO2 emitters. Now we should find a new growth engine, and we should uh, change our uh, paradigm from brown economy to green economy, uh, nurturing some green sectors. That's why we hosted the, the headquarter of a green uh, climate fund. And uh, you know, uh, we would like to uh, get uh, many lessons uh, from Utah State because uh, Salt Lake City uh, was a uh, city to host uh, successfully the Winter Olympics in 2002, am I right? So in 2018, the Korea will host uh, the Winter Olympics. So there are many areas, many rooms to cooperate with each other. And you know, Korea is uh, very unique in, in the world because uh, Korea transformed from an aid respond country, an aid donor country. Uh, uh, I was born in 1960. At the time, Korean GDP per capita was um, 75 US dollars. Korea was uh, one of the poorest countries in the world. But Korea has developed with a kind of speed. So Korea is now sharing our uh, development experience with many developing countries, in particular African countries, uh, teaching the policymakers 
how to catch a fish rather than giving a fish. That's why we will increase our ODA uh, by 2030s. Now let me move on uh, in inter-Korea uh, relations. You know, North Korea has engaged in a series of uh, provocations, such as uh, long-range missiles or nuclear tests, uh, which have heightened uh, tensions on the Korean um, peninsula. So uh, given all kinds of uncertainties uh, on the Korean peninsula, the you know, prime agenda of uh, South Korea's diplomacy is to maintain peace and stability on the Korean peninsula. But it's a time to, uh, I mean, to break the uh, vicious cycle of uh, military provocation of North Korea, uh, followed by a very fragile uh, compromise, and then uh, followed by another uh, military uh, provocation. The North Korea successful launch of uh, its long-range missile, uh, you know, indicates that it's the weapons of uh, mass destruction uh, capabilities. But what concerns us more is the close cooperation between North Korea and some rogue states in developing a long-range missiles. Such cooperation, uh, I believe, will uh, endanger the world peace and the stability. That's why international community should send a strong voice to North Korea not to proliferate such kind of weapons of mass destruction. You know, with a long-range uh, uh, missile such as uh, uh, ICBM, intercontinental ballistic missiles, uh, equipped with uh, a small uh, nuclear warhead, North Korea set a plan to strike against uh, U.S. mainland. So now North Korea's uh, nuclear uh, weapons threats uh, are bound to destroy uh, stability and the security on the uh, Korean Peninsula and beyond. Uh, but, uh, you know, North Korean people are starving or are suffering from malnutrition or hunger. But in spite of that, uh, North Korea spends the, a huge money in developing uh, a long-range missile and nuclear uh, weapons. So you know, New York Times report that um, uh, North Korea spends uh, 1.3 uh, billion US dollars. Uh, and uh, uh, for North Korean leader and uh, their entourage, North Korea spends uh, 646 million US dollars for importing luxury goods. But the uh, UN uh, World Food Program asked the donor nations to give, give uh, for food and other humanitarian aid for North Korean. It's the only the amount to 150 million US dollars. Uh, Despite the uh, initial worries, the you know, young leader, 30 years of uh, North Korean uh, regime, Kim Jong-un, has solidified his uh, uh, power in party, and government, and the military. So uh, it seemingly, there, is, there will be no signs of a concrete challenge to his leadership. Uh, so you know, uh, last year, uh, she purged or executed his uncle, uh, reportedly number two. Uh, to solidify his power. But Chang Song Tae was reportedly a pro reformist. So uh, the purge of uh, his uncle uh, will endanger the reform policy of North Korea. You know, uh, in the satellite image on the left, North Korea is kind of an uh, island, you know, uh, because you can see the darkness over North Korea in contrast with South Korea. Uh, due to energy shortage. Now North Korea is now heavily dependent on uh, the oil import from China. Uh, but North Korea's uh, uh, ailing economy is not uh, likely to recover in the short term. So uh, North Korea's simult simultaneous pursuit of uh, uh, economic development and uh, a nuclear arsenal is impossible. In other terms, uh, North Korea cannot have a cake and eat it too. So it's a time for North Korea to choose one. So now the ball is in the court. Uh, that means if North Korea gives up its nuclear arsenal, uh, South Korea along with the international community are ready to provide huge economic assistance. You know, go, now uh, uh, North Korea's uh, public distribution system, which has been 
a backbone of social system has been virtually collapsed. Now there are many uh, free markets, and uh, about uh, more than two million of, of uh, uh, cell phone users indicate uh, a possible inflow of uh, outside information. That's why North Korean uh, leadership is very afraid of the uh, widespread of uh, outside information through uh, internet or SNS. So they tight controls uh, the use of uh, internet or SNS. However, you know, South Korean music and drama are easily available in the uh, North Korea's market and even widely viewed by North Korean residents according to uh, the testimony of uh, defectors or refugees. Uh, Shimonas of uh, North Korea is the worst of the worst as labeled by the Freedom, Freedom House. Now, UN Human Rights Commission uh, describes a systematic and widespread of uh, uh, human rights violation. Uh, so North Korean authority violated human rights by engaging in discrimination or you know, arbitrary detention, torture, and public executions. Uh, reportedly, uh, about uh, 150,000 inmates uh, are now detained in uh, political prison camps. And of course, they are often beaten, tortured, and inhumanly uh, treated. Uh, the number of refugees fleeing North Korea uh, due to political suppression, hunger, and uh, human rights violations uh, have been increasing over years. But the total number of uh, refugees entering South Korea uh, amounted to uh, 26,000 in uh, January this year. Uh, but uh, uh, since 2012, the numbers of defectors or refugees has been dropped or decreased because of a tight control of the border area between North Korea and, and China. So international society should uh, join in one voice to, to send uh, a strong message to North Korea uh, not to uh, uh, violate human rights, not to uh, proliferate uh, uh, the weapons of mass destruction. So, the, but uh, as I told you, window of opportunity remains open for North Korea to emerge from self-imposed isolations. So North Korea uh, make, uh, should make a right choice to become a responsible member of international community. Against the backdrop, the South Korean government uh, uh, you know, uh, proposed a trust-building uh, uh, parties vis-a-vis uh, -vis North Korea. Uh, you know, uh, unlike Germany, uh, you know, between South and North Korea, we have a very, very heterogeneity uh, because we have totally different uh, political, economic, and social system. Only we speak one language, Korean language. So, how can we uh, integrate each other before unification? So it's very important uh, to build a trust. But building a trust is like uh, uh, building a house by laying one brick uh, at a time. So it takes that uh, patience and time. Uh, you know, but as it uh, takes the two to tango, so the establishment of, uh, uh, I mean, uh, trust cannot be achieved through uh, the efforts of South Korea alone, but can be built up uh, you know, through the interaction between the two Koreas. So there are four uh, uh, guiding principles. The first and foremost uh, is very important to deter further provocation through strengthened proliferation deterrence. So we are now working closely uh, between Korea and the, the United States based upon strong alliance. And number two, I will continue to uh, take diplomatic pressure to abandon nuclear program through implementation of the UN Security, Security Council resolution. And thirdly, we'll try to resume ceasefire talks uh, which have uh, stalled for last uh, four years uh, this fight house uh, uh, comprised of uh, two Koreas, uh, Japan, China, Korea, uh, United States, and Russia, uh, designed to um, discuss uh, 
to abandon North Korea's nuclear weapons, but North Korea uh, did not uh, come to uh, a table. That's why still uh, ceasefire talks uh, has been stirred. Uh, so it's a time uh, to break uh, the uh, vicious cycle, but to create a virtual cycle of a nuclear disarmament, trust building process, and then uh, followed by peace and cooperation in Northeast Asia. You know, go, when uh, South Korean president uh, visited uh, uh, Germany, in particular Dresden of East Germany, to have uh, some lessons uh, from German unification, uh, she announced three agendas. Number one agenda for humanity. That means, uh, but since the Korean War, there has been more than uh, 10 million of separate families. It's, uh, f from the humanitarian viewpoint, it's, very, it's a kind of a tragedy. So South Korea uh, proposed a reunion of separate families, but uh, North Korea uh, did not uh, respond to our offer. Uh, second agenda is the co-prosperity. You know, the North Korea's economic size uh, amount to 3.7% of South Korean economy size. Even though we achieved unification, uh, you know, uh, there will be a huge burden of uh, a unified Korea. That's why before unification, it's better to uh, help North Korea's uh, infrastructure, uh, if necessary, so with uh, the China or uh, Russia. Uh, the last agenda is the integration. So as I told you, it's very important to Integrate economically, socially, uh, people uh, or after unification. That's why we encourage the exchange of uh, history, research, or culture, and art, uh, which would be easier to uh, cooperate with each other. So the cooperation and the rapprochement or reconciliation between the two Koreas uh, are of paramount importance uh, uh, to pave the way uh, for uh, peaceful unification. Uh, you know, uh, Goldman Sachs, one of the leading investment bank in New York, uh, predicted a unified Korea would be the seventh uh, largest economy in the world in 2050. And uh, a unified Korea's GDP per capita would be about $85,000. Uh, so, Unified Korea's GDP per capita would be number two following the United States. It's a very optimistic viewpoint. But you know, Winston Churchill once said, uh, a pessimist always finds the difficulty in, in every opportunity, but an optimist always finds the opportunity in every difficulty. That's why our, I would be so optimist. And uh, of course, with the optimism, so you can move on and move on. Now let me move on. Uh, the Korea-U.S. alliance, is the, which is the main theme of my presentation. You know, Korea-U.S. Uh, uh, sharing values of uh, free democracy and market economy have expanded uh, uh, our bilateral relations in many different sectors, uh, the beyond the political and the security matters. Uh, you know, the South Koreans remain strongly pro-Americans, according to uh, public uh, opinion poll. Uh, and, uh, you know, uh, last year, a uh, South Korean president uh, uh, visited uh, in the United States and uh, President Obama uh, visited uh, Korea uh, this year. Uh, b b based upon good chemistry between the two leaders, uh, now we have uh, expanded our strong relations uh, uh, our, between our two countries. Uh, but, of course, there are many shopping lists to, to do between our two countries because uh, Korea is not a uh, small country, uh, so we have some trade dispute, etc. Among others, uh, the revision of uh, civil nuclear energy cooperation agreement uh, should be made, uh, of course, in a timely and mutually beneficial and uh, looking forward manners. Uh, last year, uh, President Obama uh, paid a tribute to the Korean War veterans for the first time as a U.S. president. He delivered a very good speech, of course, in English. But in one sentence in Korean, he said, "Da gachi kapsida." That means, uh, "Let's go together. Let's work together for next 60 years." Because last year marked 60 years of alliance 
between Korea and this great country, the United States. Uh, you know, uh, uh, yesterday uh, we honored the Korean War veterans. So, you know, go, uh, today, uh, so Seoul Lake uh, Tribune and uh, the other newspaper, that's right, the news uh, report that uh, uh, the event yesterday in honoring Korean War veterans. Now, without heroism, valor, and sacrifice of the Korean War veterans, today's Korea would not be enjoying peace, democracy, and economic prosperity. Thanks to the devotion and uh, sacrifice of the Korean War veterans, Korea now enjoys the full democracy, a vibrant democracy, as well as uh, you know, the fifth largest economy in the world. So it's a time for Korea uh, to uh, be grateful for the sacrifice made the, by the, uh, made by the Korean War uh, veterans. But in San Francisco, there is, there is nothing in uh, Korean War Memorial unlike Utah State, but in Utah State, uh, there are uh, eighth, and uh, there are eighth uh, the memorial, uh, not only in Salt Lake, but also in Seattle system, many places. So we are so grateful uh, for that. And uh, that's why so we are starting to build a Korean War memorial in San Francisco. Uh, once built, the memorial will serve as the good place to, for the education of our younger generation, because I believe our younger generation, our future generation, must be educated on how people told the Korean World War and how important our bilateral relations is. Yeah, Brigham Young University is the world uh, prestigious university. You know, in terms of a number of foreign students studying the United States, uh, uh, South Koreans uh, ranks number three, uh, following China and India. Uh, there are about 270,000 Chinese students. There are about 111,000 Indian students. But there are 91,000 South Korean students uh, in the United States. But given the proportion of the population, they are from 1.4 billion, 1.3 billion. But we are from 50 million. So Korea is number one in terms of uh, <laughs> students. So uh, you know, many uh, talented uh, uh, Korean students Will, will come to Brigham universities and the other university in Utah State in the future. Uh, but uh, out of 91,000 South Korean students, uh, there are about uh, approximately 30,000 South Korean students who are studying STEM, science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. But after graduating this, uh, uh, these universities, they face some difficulty in uh, finding a job because of the visa problems. That's why, uh, you know, a bill with the name of a partner with Korea Act uh, is now uh, in the pending in the U.S. House. So uh, I met many the congressmen, congresswomen to ask uh, their support for uh, Korean nationals uh, to work in the United States. Uh, I believe they can benefit of a local economy, the U.S. economy, because they are very talented and high school manpower. So as of now, uh, 104. Members of Congress uh, uh, joined as a co-sponsor for that bill. Let me briefly touch upon Korea USFTA. Uh, Korea US is now Korea's second uh, trading partner, and uh, since the commencement of a free trade agreement, uh, our trade volume has been uh, growing and growing. And now Korea is the Utah's tenth largest market. Uh, you know, Utah export more than uh, 68 uh, million. Uh, uh, dollars in beauty and skin care products, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, to Korea. And, uh, you know, uh, regarding the connection beyond the trade between Korea and the Utah, in 2012, uh, it was estimated that uh, there were more than 8,200 uh, 8, Koreans, the Korean Americans living in Utah, and there were about uh, 1,000 uh, students from Korea studying at the University in Utah uh, as of last year. It's the uh, products of uh, export and import. Uh, it's, uh, I skip uh, given the uh, time schedule. Okay. Well, I'm up with uh, uh, the time is limiting, but uh, you know, the, 
uh, uh, very famous uh, singer, Sai. He's uh, more famous than Korea's uh, prime minister, but uh, uh, more than two billion, but now it's more than three billion uh, people uh, watch the, uh, his the song, uh, Gangnam Style. Uh, now his new song, uh, Sai's Gentleman, or Hangover, also is uh, now uh, very popular, but uh, I don't know. Uh, you can hear some song with your permission, about uh, four, four minutes. Okay, did you enjoy? Uh, uh, please stay, uh, raise your hands uh, if you know uh, Gangnam Style, most of them. So uh, Professor Petros is very happy uh, with good smiles. Uh, you know, almost uh, 9.3 million, uh, uh, now there are uh, Hallyu fans uh, worldwide. So the Time Magazine recognized uh, the Hallyu, a Korean wave stage is South Korea's uh, great, uh, greatest export. Daejanggum, uh, which describes the love story uh, between King and uh, his uh, cook, and now was syndicated in over 60 countries around the world. So now Korean drama uh, is very, very popular. You know, the people to people uh, exchange or ties has been increasing. Uh, you know, there are many uh, the football players uh, or baseball players in Korea 
uh, vice versa in, in the United States also. And it's very yummy. Yeah? So, you know, in two years ago, if I'm not mistaken, fourth rate Michelle Obama made a kimchi uh, with the cabbage of the White House, and uh, uh, she tweeted her own recipe. Since then, kimchi has been very popular. The another typical Korean food is uh, called bibimbap. It rice with a variety of vegetables and we on a sunny side of eggs, you know. Uh, uh, every time the late Michael Jackson visited Korea, reportedly he used to have a bibimbap because bibimbap is a very healthy food. <laughs> now it's the uh, last slide of my presentation. Uh, you know, uh, there are almost uh, uh, 1,000 Korean language heritage schools uh, in the United States. Uh, so many Americans uh, want to uh, learn Korean language. And the Korean uh, waves such as uh, Korean dramas uh, and uh, Korean uh, films and uh, K-pop is now spread worldwide. So it's my job to galvanize Korean language and the Korean uh, culture among American society. Uh, so, I mean, uh, Korean language has gained much interest and popularity among American people. It's the, uh, being a bilingual in Korean and in English would be a great asset given the growing importance of our bilateral relations. Um, you know, uh, Korea is a uh, full of hope. Uh, the Peter Drucker, one of the uh, leading thinkers, once said, uh, the best way to predict the future is to make it. So I hope that uh, you can continue to promote and uh, support our strong bilateral relations in many different sectors between Korea and United States. Thank you very much uh, for your attention. Uh, Pastor Ben, would you like to take some questions? Yes, sir. Uh, yeah. So uh, we have a few minutes for questions. If you'd like to line up at the, wire, the mic here on the side, and we'll uh, have you form a queue there. And then please tell us your name and what you're studying so we can get to know who you are. And uh, feel free to remain in fast your questions. If there is no questions, uh, my presentation was perfect. That means uh, <laughs> I can interpret uh, with optimism. <laughs> Any questions? Yes. Uh, hello, my name is Ruby Higgins, and I'm a Korean studies major. Uh, and I'm very interested in the North Korean Korean international relations between the two uh, Koreas. And I was wondering if you believe that a unified Korea is a possible future within the next 20 years. Well, I cannot say it's the, the time period, but uh, because I am not a fortune teller, but uh, <laughs> definitely we'll achieve the unification in a peaceful manner. But what is the more important is to make a peaceful unification uh, and uh, also to integrate. Uh, uh, the unified Korea. So to do that, uh, we'll continue to uh, build a trust and confidence uh, between our two countries. Uh, so maybe one day we'll see uh, and uh, our dreams will come true. All right, thank, thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you again. Uh,